Hello, welcome to Jason the Old Millennial. My name is Jason, speaking to you here in my basement in the great state of Kansas. In today's video, I am continuing my rankings of my 100 favorite albums. This time, I'm at number 39 on my list, which is a classic Britpop 90s uh, album for me, and it is called What's the Story, Morning Glory by the band Oasis. So stay tuned to see what I think and hear my review here on Jason the Old Millennial. <laughs> Hello everybody, hope everybody's doing well on a Thursday evening. Um, I had a pretty good day. I got to uh, get to be on uh, Mike uh, Z, uh, Did You Z That? Uh, he has uh, a live stream that he does on Thursday. He's called Z Talks. Uh, this, I did this earlier today. So check out on his channel to see me on there with uh, Jacob Martin and a guy I met for the first time named Harry. Uh, we had a great time talking a couple hours about movies. Um, making some hot takes for sure. <laughs> uh, talking a lot of superhero stuff going on. Uh, anyways, great talks and I always appreciate Mike for having me on his channel. It's the third time I got to be on Z Talks and I feel so blessed, uh, to be a friend of Mike's and, uh, get to be involved on that channel because, uh, I remember watching that channel when I was a, kind of a nobody and, uh, not that I'm anybody now, but uh, before I had 100 subscribers, I was watching that channel and going, man, I'd love to be on Z Talks. And like, man, I just feel so happy that I got to be on Z Talks three times now. And so thank you a lot to that, to Mike anyways, but uh did that. Got to be on a live stream yesterday also with Jacob Martin, uh, another one of my favorite YouTubers to collaborate with. And I hope to collaborate more with Jacob because I think we have a lot of uh, similar viewpoints on movies. Not always. We do uh, argue or do uh, differ on some stuff, but uh, I really like his opinion on things. And we talked about one of my favorite movies, uh, Dr. Strangelove, on his channel. Really had a great time there. Um, that was on Jacob Martin's channel. I'm doing live streams on everybody's channel uh, this week because uh, Saturday I'm going to be on Adam's uh, What the Gym's channel at 2 p.m. Central Standard Time. And we are going to rank every Ringo song, which are 11, that he sung uh, when he was with the Beatles anyway. So uh, hopefully that'll be fun, two of us uh, talking about Ringo on that. So that's what we're doing this week. Um, yeah, today I'm doing the, another uh, uh, album, uh, my top 100. I'm up to 39 on my list. And this is a, kind of a special album for me, very big from my childhood. As you see, it's um, What's the Story, Morning Glory from Oasis. Um, I just bought this recently. I, I showed it on one uh, my physical media pickup. I just wanted to get the album. I ended up getting this deluxe uh, book. It's like a book. And so anyway, so it's kind of interesting. Uh, it's cool. I mean, it's something to you know, kind of collector item. I guess maybe I can um, put with everything. Three CDs on it. Uh, I guess the other two are just alternative takes or other songs that didn't make it. I'm more interested in just the the first disc of the thing, but. I like there's a lot of cool pictures in here of the band, mostly the two brothers, the Gallagher brothers. Um, anyways, and then it has all the songs and it has like a little like notes on the song, I guess, uh, where it came from or whatever notes they want to write in there. But that's cool. I like the concert footage there of, of them. But yeah, it's a very cool booklet here um, that you can look through. Um, but yeah, so anyways, Oasis, What's the Story, Morning Glory, uh, big album for me. In fact, it's funny, I I, I put on 39, I'm, I was afraid that people might make fun of me for putting it so high on my list, uh, that there's, I've heard some people don't like Oasis, that uh, there's some backlash against them, I don't know, but they evidently have their fans as well, as, as I am one of them, uh, probably my favorite band of the 90s, um, we're pretty close to it, if not, uh, I know um, Sam St. John, he just went through his 100 favorite albums recently, and uh, this album was number nine on his list. So it was actually uh, much higher on his list than mine. I thought I was putting it up pretty high at 39 uh, for my list because uh, I absolutely love this album. Yeah, I know it's like, oh, it's just a 90s Britpop, you know, album. It doesn't really compare to the classics. I don't know. But for me, um, this is special because uh, when this came out in 95, I was about 12 years old, maybe 11, 12 years old. And I wasn't listening to nineties music at the time. I was actually listening to sixties and seventies music. Uh, I kind of grew up listening to the Beatles and, uh, a lot of the classics, uh, the British invasions and stuff like that. Um, 
at the time. And so I actually wasn't listening to it. Um, I kind of got introduced to 90s music actually through Alanis Morissette's album, Jagged Little Pill. My s older sister had borrowed that album from somebody and I took a listen. I was like, wow, this is pretty good. Uh, I kind of really enjoyed that album and it was just different than what I was listening to from the 60s and 70s. Of course, it was much more rocker, much more edgier types music. And I was like, oh, that's pretty good. I like this. And so then I started listening to 90s radio, you know, whatever the hits were at the time on the radio. And I was listening to a lot of uh, the rock music of the time. And I remember one time listening to uh, the station, T95, it was called 95.1. And uh, the song uh, Wonderwall came on. And I was like totally blown away. I remember listening to the song for the first time being like, what is this? Who I had no idea who the band was, what the song was. I was like, and this was before internet really, or internet was very, I mean, internet might've been there, but it was before, you know, it was easy to find everything. Um, and of course, before Amazon, before all that kind of stuff, YouTube and all that. And so I remember just hearing that radio and being like, man, that song was amazing. Like I absolutely loved Oasis, or loved uh, Wonderwall. And so um, I remember just every time I'd listen to the radio, just waiting for that song. That was like my favorite song that year, I would say, was Wonderwall. And so I must have got some money together, maybe from mowing the lawn. I used to mow the lawn and get money. My dad gave me, or my parents gave me uh, some allowance money. And so I went and I was, I was, I knew I was like, I have to get this album, uh, What's Story Morning Glory by Oasis. Because I was like, once I found out who the band was and everything, what the album it came off of, of course, I went to Walmart and uh, got this album. Uh, it's the first album I bought, I guess, especially because it was like the first album that I actually like bought with my own money. And it was also the first CD I bought. At the time, I was still listening to cassettes. So, And of course, CDs were getting real big at that time. So I was really wanting to transition from cassettes to uh, CDs and like buy a CD player. And uh, bought this album. It was my first album, first CD that I bought and listened to it a lot. I mean, of course, it was like the only CD I had at the time, but I was like, listen to this nonstop, loved the album at the time, you know, of course, still love it. Uh, yeah, so it made a big impact on me. And uh, so I always have a very fondness for Oasis because listening to this album just uh, was like one of the greatest albums I've ever heard, uh, you know, starting to listen to current music at the time. Anyway, so this is Oasis second album, like I said, it came out in 95. First album did okay. This definitely was the big album for them uh, that really put them on the map and had tons of hit singles on it and sold tons of records. Uh, very, very popular album. And I remember, of course, everybody talking about it at the time. Uh, of course, it's known because it's uh, the, the two main kind of leaders of the band are the Gallagher brothers. Really, it's uh, Noel Gallagher, the older brother. He's the lead guitar player and, um, and he uh, also does some lead singing and is also, uh, he does pretty much all the writing. For this album, He it was pretty much, this is Noah Gallagher's album, uh, doing the research on it. I mean, he really, he co-produced it. Uh, he really put a lot into, you know, mixing it or whatever, putting the different instruments into it, and kind of really uh, made, made, really wanted to make it the perfect album, I think. And um, so he really had a lot to do with it. He wrote like pretty much all the songs. Um, of course, he's lead guitar on it. Uh, does a lot of background singing, if not lead singing, um, on the album. So um, definitely put his handprint on this album. Uh, and when he did it, uh, well, from what I read, he said he really wanted to go heavy on guitars more than the first album. Uh, he also wanted these big choruses that are very catchy. I think he kind of knew like what would sell maybe or what would, you know, the public would want to hear. <laughs> Anyways, and so he really kind of really tapped into that very well. Like I said, with the loud guitars, the uh, big choruses, really catchy music. Um, he also added some string arrangements into the songs, which were nice. Anyway, so he did a really great job just bringing it all together, I think. And it's funny, the criticism I hear from a lot of people that listen to it will say it's too loud, which I was like, oh, I didn't know that was something you can criticize about music. Like, loud is good to me. Loud guitars, I like the loud guitars. Like, when you listen to a song, it just, boom, once those guitars hit you, like, oh, it's so good um, for me anyways. My ears, I just like, oh, I'm just like really into the zone when I'm listening to this music. Anyway, so I never get that criticism, but I guess the guitars are pretty loud and heavy on here. I just always thought that was normal because that's like the first album I listened to, one of the first albums I listened to uh, of the 90s anyway. So, but yeah, I, I absolutely love what, they, what Noah did with this. 
or Noel did with this album. Uh, this was absolutely, like I said, huge. At the time, uh, this was called the Brit Pop Movement, which I don't remember it being called that at the time, but now I hear everybody call it about Brit Pop, and uh, I don't really know who exactly was. To me, it was just rock. I think we called it alternative rock at the time, but to me, it's just a really solid rock album. Like I said, great guitar works on them, great uh, vocal work. Uh, just really works together like that. But it was called, I guess now we call it Brit Pop uh, because it's a British band. I guess there's a lot of, it must have been like a lot of British bands coming in in the 90s. I remember there was talk of like Oasis is like the second Beatles. I remember a lot of people talking about like, uh, of course, they were a huge fan of the Beatles, as you know, of course a lot of people are, and probably took a lot of um, influences from the Beatles, uh, I'm sure they'd probably say. Uh, you know, so it's kind of interesting that there was a lot, of, it was a little too much hype. I mean, you never want to compare yourself to the Beatles or try to talk about yourself being like the next Beatles. I mean, no one's going to be the next Beatles. No one can compare it to the Beatles. You just, it's it's a bad idea to do it. And of course, their career never really hit the height. This is the peak of their career, I would say, is this album. The next album, Be Here Now, I also have in my top 100. I think it's also a really good album. Uh, it's much lower on my list, though, compared to this one. Still has some good music in it. Uh, but just this one really, hit, I mean, hit right at the right time. Uh, just perfect album for them. Uh, really showcased them really well. And just none of their other albums really were ever going to um, compare to this one, unfortunately, I guess, for them. And so, no, they're not the next Beatles, um, but they were pretty good. And they had, I really took um, British music by storm at the time. Uh, from what I've uh, been researching, um, they sold a record-breaking 345,000 copies in the first week in UK. So first week in UK, just like gangbusters. Much more popular in UK than the US, even though I'm an American, so I, I, I know it from the US position. It was a, I felt like it was a very popular album and did very well, but man, it really did well in the UK. Um, it was number one in the UK for 10 weeks, so uh, it did a really incredible, um, sold a lot. Uh, in the US, it was, it was number four, so still a top five album in the US when it came out. And it, it was four times platinum, so still did very well in the US, but did really, really, really good. One of the top albums probably in UK history, I'm sure. I know their next album, Be Here Now, actually sold even more records, but that's because I think this album was so good. Everybody was anticipating the next album, so the next album sold even more than this one, uh, even though critically it's not as praised as this one, I would say. Um, if you don't know the band, the band, like I said, it's the, kind of known as the Gallagher Brothers, um, Liam and Noel, and it's kind of famous for They Don't Get Along. And they keep breaking up the band because uh, they keep fighting, uh, which is unfortunate. And they, and you see interviews with them and they curse a lot. And uh, it's kind of an interesting uh, dynamic, I guess you can say. A lot of bad, uh, a lot of bad, you know, vibes there between the two, which is unfortunate because they make such good music together. I wish they were together. Um, but Liam Gallagher is the younger brother. He's the lead singer, I would say, of the band. And he has one of the best rock vocals of any band. Like I always say, one of my favorite rock vocalists is Liam Gallagher. He just has, and it's just a natural, really good voice, I feel like, and very unique and uh, makes every song so much better, I think, because of his voice. So I, I'm a big fan of his uh, vocals on the band. Noel Gallagher, like I said, uh, like I said, it's kind of the leader of some of the band. He's kind of the one that started it, and he's the older brother. And he's lead guitar player, great guitar player, really good, solid guitar work on the whole album. And of course, like I said, did a lot with it. Um, he also does some singing. He has a decent voice as well and can do some lead singing as well. I don't think his voice is quite as good as Liam. Uh, but of course, since they've broken up, they both kind of done their own solo work. And they both sing Oasis songs, of course. And so Noel has done a lot of singing now um, as a solo artist. I would say. Um, Alan White was their drummer. Paul Authors, uh, another guitar player on the band. And Paul McGuinn uh, is their bass player. Anyway, so that's the band. Um, but mostly, you really just know the Gallagher Brothers, kind of what you mostly know from that band. Um, like I said, they don't play together, I believe, anymore. Unfortunately, they've broken up some time ago, I believe. And so I believe they both have gone off and done concerts on their own. I don't know if they, either one takes the name Oasis anymore. If they just take their own name. Uh, cause I feel like they they're doing like their own solo work. I know Liam came out with a solo album uh, just this last year, maybe. And I know Sam Sam said John's a big fan of Liam Gallagher's work, so I know he's done pretty well in his solo work. And I've seen footage of him singing in concert and stuff, which is uh, still pretty interesting. 
Uh, he still takes on a lot of the Oasis songs like that, except they just can't get together. They just can't get along, the Gallagher brothers, unfortunately. Unfortunately, so we won't probably get a reunion. I don't know if we'll get another reunion of those two. And that'd be great to like have like maybe a concert just playing this whole album would be just absolutely amazing. Anyways, but yeah, they had tons of singles that came out in the UK, which is kind of interesting. I only remember three in the US, um, but I'll go through some of these. Um, one single, first single was Some Might Say, which was the number one single in the UK, which was interesting. It's a great song. It's not one of the big hits off the album, uh, but it's kind of cool that it went number one in the UK. Um, Roll With It, another really good song, went number two in the UK. So, I mean, still really good. Uh, Morning Glory, which is kind of the song, uh, the title of the the um, uh, of the uh, album. It's What's the Story, Morning Glory. So the song Morning Glory, uh, number two in the UK. Um, Wonderwall, which was to me the biggest hit off this album, it was the first one that really kind of let me know who they were. Uh, surprisingly, it was only number two in the UK. That's still pretty good. I'm kind of surprised it's not number one. Uh, it was number eight in the US, which again, I'm surprised it wasn't a number one song. It seems so big. Um, then you got Don't Look Back in Anger um, was number one in the UK. And then Champagne Supernova was uh, number one in the US alternative play. Um, anyway, so that did well uh, in the US. I remember Wonderwall, Don't Look Back in Anger, and Champagne Supernova were all over the radio, like I said, back in this time period in the mid-90s. Uh, I used to love hearing those songs on the radio. They would play quite a bit. So those three did very, very well here anyways. and so, But you got two songs that were number one hits in the UK, and then three other songs that were number two. So, I mean, that, that's pretty incredible work there for uh, this album and their works on the singles anyway. So... Um, yeah, so I'm going to end this with my top three favorite songs, which is not, not going to be a surprise. It's kind of the usual top three of this album, anybody probably say. Um, I will say, like, songs like Some Might Say, really good, didn't make my top three. Solid rock song. Uh, Mor Morning Glory is probably the, the hardest rock song on here and is really fun to listen to. I really enjoy that one um, as well, but didn't quite make it in my top three. My number three favorite song I'm having on here, these all three of these songs could be number one. They're all really great. But I put Champagne Supernova at number three. And this is usually, I, I'm, I'm getting a lot of people put this number one on their list, uh, which I totally understand. This is totally deserving of number one on on their on Oasis list. Uh, still a solid song. It's a little more uh, softer. It's not a hard rock song. It's more of a softer side song. It's very long. Uh and maybe that's why I downed it to number three, because I can't remember how long, but it's a pretty long song. Uh, it's still got good radio play. But yeah, I just love the acoustic guitar work on here. Love the vocals. Um, another great chorus. A lot of great choruses and catchiness to a lot of these songs on the album. But yeah, Champions Moving Over is almost like this epic song that ended the album. So very deserving, very good song. Uh, number two, I have Wonderwall. Um, it's almost overplayed. I think a lot of people got some backlash because it was like, this was played too much on the radio. Maybe, but it was a great song. Love the way they begin the song with the acoustic guitar. Love the acoustic sound to it. And then you add Liam Gallagher's vocals. I mean, absolutely amazing. I love the opener. Liam's great vocals with just an acoustic guitar. It just really um, showcased his voice very well, just having it out there almost by itself. Uh, and, it's, and I love how it kind of transitions from him just singing with the acoustic guitar and then the drums come in and the bass comes in and we had a fuller sound for the second verse. I mean, I love how they transition from first verse to second verse. Again, great chorus, you know, and after all, you're a wonder ball. I mean, just absolutely amazing chorus uh, and great vocals by Liam. Anyway, so yeah, number two, Wonderwall. Number one for me. It's very hard because these all three are great songs, but number one, I put Don't Don't Look Back in Anger. And it's just, it's, I love the guitar work on here, I think more than any other song on here. Uh, great guitar riffs, uh, guitar solo in there. I mean, just absolutely love what he does. Overall, great uh, catchy verses and uh, great melody in there. And then one of the best choruses, again, uh, I love watching this uh, concert footage of like Liam singing the song and then he, you know, of course, when he gets to the chorus, he has the audience singing it. And it's so cool to listen to the audience. I'm thinking, man, I would love to be in the audience singing this because it's one of those great courses to sing to, you know. So sorry to wait. It's too late, but she's walking on by. So sorry to wait, but don't look back in anger. I heard her say. And, oh, gosh, such a great chorus. So fun to listen to. And just, yeah, just a really solid rock song. 
uh, one of the best of the 90s, in my opinion. So that's Don't Look Back in Anger, number one favorite song on this album, though. Every song is great, I think. Like, you listen to this whole album, and I always go, man, every song is good. Enjoy, I enjoy every song. There's not a song that I skip or I think, oh, this is a, a bad one on album. I'm just like, man, every song is solid to great. So definitely have to recommend this if you like rock music. Uh, it's a great rock album, in my opinion. Uh, one of the best albums of the 90s. That's What's the Story of Morning Glory. Number 39 on my list. So uh, please uh, comment. What do you think about what's this album? Do you like Oasis? Do you like What's the Story of Morning Glory? Uh, I know, Sam, you're a big fan, so I hope you're watching this and agree with me. Um, but yeah, so yeah, just feel free to comment what you think about this album, where it is on your list if it is. I love to read them. And just thank you for everybody watching this video. Thank you for liking it. And just thank you to all of the subscribers for supporting the channel. I appreciate you all and have a good day.